Hey y'all, thank you for stopping and clicking on this video. Welcome to my channel. I am the Electrifying Educator. Today, I have a really awesome video for you. One of my subscribers, Miss Jessica, hey girl, um, asked me if I would um, make a video talking about how to become a math specialist. So, I'm so excited, but hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Before we get started, I need you to go ahead. You know what I'm talking about. Click that subscribe button, okay? Come on over to the E-Team. E-Team, what you talking about? E-Team. Girl, bro, the E-Team is a team of enthusiastic, energetic, highly effective educators. If that's you, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Click that subscribe button. Okay. I'll wait. Go ahead. No. Click it. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this video. Okay, y'all know everybody is at home because we're on quarantine, so I'm going to try to get through this video before my husband and my kids wake up, okay? <laughs> Before I start talking about the five steps to becoming a math specialist, I want to go ahead and give you kind of a definition, um, the characteristics and qualities that you need to have to be a math specialist, and, you know, a few tidbits that you need to know. So, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notebook. I referenced NCTM, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, and I visited their website, nctm.org, to kind of make sure that I was giving you a um, politically correct definition and just the national description of what a math specialist is. So um, I'll link their website below. Okay, so I want to go ahead and give you a few disclaimers about being a math specialist. Every district has a, a their own organizational structure and how they um, structure things in their different departments and the supports that they offer. So that's one thing. The second thing is if your district does offer the, these supports, um, uh, instructional coaching and math specialists and Title I teachers and those types of supports, Every campus may or may not have one. So that's another thing to consider. Most campuses that have these supports are going to be your low socioeconomic schools or your schools that need to increase scores or your Title I schools for the most part. And the third thing is your roles and responsibilities may vary from campus to campus and district to district. So those are just things you need to um, take into consideration and kind of keep in the back of your mind um, as you are looking for these types of jobs. And FYI, girl, if you see my nails, just ignore them. You know, we on quarantine right now, okay? <laughs> so what is a math specialist? A math specialist is a teacher leader who supports effective math instruction and student learning. A math specialist should be someone who is passionate about teaching and wants to further develop their mathematical knowledge and their teaching skills. Um, they should also want to further their uh, ability to mentor and support the, the professional development of their fellow teachers. So what do math specialists do? Well, your roles and responsibilities may vary, but here is a short list of things that you could be required to do. Number one, you could be required to teach m multiple courses or grade levels, depending on if you're elementary or secondary. You could also co-teach with a teacher, go in and out of the classroom co-teaching with a teacher. Another thing you may respons be responsible for doing is working with a particular group of students. For example, you may be in charge of the RTI group, those students that need the extra support, those tier, those tier three students. Or you may have a remediation course that you're working with based on data from previous years and they were placed in a remediation course. You could be asked to be more of a coach where you're working with teachers, um, helping them improve instruction and assessments. 
you could be in charge of professional development where you're building capacity and you're targeting school-wide math improvement. And what it means to build capacity is strengthening the teacher's understanding of the content and helping them develop more effective instructional and assessment practices. So what are the qualities that you should have as a math specialist? You should have a deep and broad understanding of math content. Because remember, you are helping build capacity, you're working with teachers, you're working with students, so you need to have a deep understanding of the content. You need to have a solid knowledge of students. You need to understand the students in whatever area you're working in, be it elementary, middle school, high school. You need to have experience working in the classroom with that set of, of students. You need expertise in using and helping others use effective instructional and assessment practices. So um, again, making sure that you've had experience with using different strategies with those students that you're going to be supporting or the teachers of those students that you're going to be supporting. And assessment is huge because data is a large piece of um, what you'll be doing as a math specialist. So being able to really analyze that data and adjusting your instruction and, and adjusting your assessment practices based on that data as well. You need to have experience in doing that. Also, being skilled with working with adult learners. Listen. Listen. Okay. Listen. That part, baby, that's the hardest part. It's not the kids. It's the adults. <laughs> Um, it can be very challenging, seriously, working with adults. So you really need to be um, skilled in working with a teacher that's taught for 20 years and a teacher that's taught for one year. And I'll kind of give you, when I get to the, the five tips, the five steps, some ways that you can become more skilled if you're not already. And the last thing is you need to have leadership skills. Leadership skills that are necessary because you're going to need to be able to influence and support the educational efforts to improve teaching and learning of mathematics. So you need to have those leadership skills. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video, okay? Five tips to becoming a math specialist, okay? Number one, the more education, the better. And what I mean is, we all have an undergrad degree, of course, but maybe going ahead and getting certified, if you're certified in elementary, maybe getting certified in middle school. Or if you're in middle school, go ahead and get certified for high school or whatever level you are. Think about getting certified for another level because it makes you more marketable because um, you aren't guaranteed necessarily to stay at your campus if you're looking for this type of job. Also, if you don't already have your graduate degree, I suggest you go ahead and take care of that. Again, it makes you more marketable. Tip number two, take every leadership opportunity that comes your way. For example, I was team leader of a mixed group of sixth and seventh grade teachers in Arkansas. I learned a lot about how to work with um different types of teachers because they weren't all math teachers. I'm department chair at my campus now, so I've learned a lot about how to be organized and, I mean, small things like ordering supplies to large things, how to mediate between a, a course of teachers, like seventh grade math team, how to mediate between them. So it's very important that you take leadership opportunities that come your way. Listen, I understand we're busy and taking leadership opportunities means more responsibility. And sometimes we don't want to take that responsibility on. But again, you get more experience, fill your toolbox with more tools that will be beneficial in supporting teachers when you're in this position. Tip number three, professional development, professional development, 
professional development. Get all the learning in that you can. Get instructional strategies, content area strategies, leadership skills, all of those come through professional development. You can get it through your district, you can get it through your co-op, but the more professional development, the better. It increases your resume, it increases your knowledge base and your marketability. Again, remember, you're going to be helping other educators. So you have to be well-versed in how to support instruction and student learning. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna have to hurry up. The hubby and the kids are up. <laughs> Tip number four, relationships are key. It is so important that you have good relationships with the people on your campus because either you're gonna be working with them in a leadership role or they're gonna be the ones that vouch for you to get this role. So relationships are key. Um, we don't get along with everybody, no one does, but there are ways to ensure that you have a strong working relationship with someone, even if they're not your favorite person. And um, there are some books that I have read that are really, really great for mediating or building trust so that you can rebuild or build relationships with other educators on your campus to help um, get you where you need to be. Um, and also to help them get where they need to be. Last tip, number five, know your content. Simple as that, know your content. And there are a lot of different ways that you can become better and have a deeper understanding of your content. One way is by getting a diverse background. For example, I'm a middle school math specialist. I have taught every grade level in middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I've almost taught every course in middle school. I've taught seventh grade, seventh grade honors, eighth grade, eighth grade honors, and sixth grade. The only course that I have not taught is sixth grade honors. So just having a diverse background in your content area. is Another way that you can make sure that you really, really know your content is become very familiar with your state standards. Whatever state that you're in, our state is Texas, so the Texas Teaks or Tex, however you pronounce them, but really, really know them, know them backwards and forwards. Not the, the number, the standard number, but the skills that are taught in each of the grade levels. For example, I'm familiar with sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and algebra because we have an algebra course for eighth graders. If you have access to a vertical alignment tool of your state standards, that tool is very, very good to help you become familiar with the flow of the math skills that they'll be learning throughout that particular level, elementary, middle school, or high school. It's invaluable. It can really help you be a better teacher for that matter because here's a prime example. In Texas, Distributive property is taught in the sixth grade. It is not a standard, again, until the algebra year, whatever year that is, eighth grade or ninth grade. So when you expect in eighth grade for a student to solve an equation with a distributive um, component in there, you have to really be mindful they haven't seen this since sixth grade or even if you're doing it in seventh grade, it's not a standard that is taught. So you do have to just keep those things in your mind as you're creating lessons. And so to know that material in a way that can really benefit your instruction is, it can really help you. It can really support you. It can support your teachers that you'll be working with. And most important, it can help your students. Okay guys, so those are the five tips that I have for becoming a math specialist. Number one, the more education, the better. Number two, take every leadership opportunity. Number three, the professional development, professional development, professional development. Number four, relationships are the keys to the kingdom. And number five, know your content. 
Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that it was helpful, that it was informative, and most importantly, that it was encouragement for you to um, go out there and do all the things. <laughs> and I wish you luck on your road towards being a math specialist. Until next time, it's the Electrifying Educator bringing positive vibes to a math classroom near you.